Good evening. I'm Pastor Susan. Welcome to our Good Friday worship. I want to thank the people who have helped to make this service happen, um, especially Karen and our worship committee, but we also have with us bringing the liturgy and the music, Marina Matsukova, her daughter Sasha Dubanovich, is that correct? And we have Carol Hines, Karen Hines, and we have Jake Mayer and Steve Curtis recording us. I want to let you know that the reason that we are unmasked for this entire presentation is that either we are sufficiently distanced or the readers have been fully vaccinated, so they're not putting one another in danger. Again, welcome to our Good Friday, and peace be with you. no longer, 
carpenters took up their tools. God's Son was made a cross. Fashioned from wood and skill of human hands. Fashioned from hate and will of human minds. He was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. For us, us he grieved. grieved. He was summoned to the judgment hall, an enemy of the state, a danger to religion. For, For us, us he was, he was judged. judged. He was lashed with tongues and scourged with thongs. By, By his wounds we are healed. healed. He was nailed to the cross by human hands. Bone, bone of our bone, bone flesh, flesh of our, our flesh. flesh. A word from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 52, verse 13, to chapter 53, verse 6. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations, kings, shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them, they shall see, and that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, and as one from whom others hide their faces. He was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Oh my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why so far from saving me? so far from the words of my groaning. My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned on the praises of Israel. Our ancestors put their trust in you. They trusted and you rescued them. Oh my God, why have you forsaken me? They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and not human, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh at me to scorn. They curl their lips. They shake their heads. Trust in the Lord. Let the Lord deliver. Let God rescue him if God so delights in him. Oh my God. Why have you forsaken me? Yet you are the one who drew me forth from the womb and kept me safe on my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. 
Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Cats of dogs close me in. A band of evil doors circles round me. They pierce my hands and my feet. Oh my God, why have you forsaken me? I can count all my bones while they stare at me and gloat. They divide my garments among them. For my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, be not far away. O oh my help, hasten to my aid. Deliver me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. He said to them, 
It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God.
they took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore at his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying, Prophesy! The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed, and the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man we're talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priest accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for him. Instead, Pilate spoke to them again, then went, What do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked him, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him. Hail, king of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. 
They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golathus, which means the place of a skull, and they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with them, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, and put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James the younger and of Joseph and of Solomon. They used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him from, to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. to you, or in what have I offended you? 
I led you forth from the land of Egypt and delivered you by the waters of baptism. But you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. We thank our God for freedom of faith and life. We pray for the leaders of the church. We pray for all who are being baptized and all who are preparing for confirmation. Holy God, have, have mercy, mercy upon, us. upon us. I went before you in a pillar of cloud, but you have led me to the judgment hall of Pilate. I brought you to a land of freedom and prosperity, but you have scourged, mocked, and beaten me. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have, have mercy upon us. us. We pray for justice, peace, and freedom in all the nations. We pray for an end to selfishness and greed in our own nation. We pray for mutual mercy and economic justice and for the preservation of the God-given land and its creatures. Holy God, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. I gave you a royal scepter and bestowed the keys to the kingdom, but you have given me a crown of thorns. I raised you on high with great power, but you have hanged me on the cross. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have, have mercy on us. We pray for the church that we may serve with truth, leading lives of humble service, that we may honor our sisters and brothers of all faiths and ourselves become one in Christ. Holy God, have mercy upon us. I gathered you into the tree of my chosen people Israel, but you turned on them with persecution and mass murder. I made you joint heirs with them of my covenants, but you made them scapegoats for your own guilt. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. We pray for the Jewish people. We pray for immigrants and refugees. We pray for justice of all persons of color and for all who are persecuted for their faith. Holy God, have, have mercy upon us. I came to you as the least of your brothers and sisters. I was hungry, but you gave me no food. Thirsty, but you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, but you did not welcome me. Naked, but you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison but you did not visit me. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. We pray for the hungry and the food insecure. We pray for those who do not have clean water. We pray for the poor, for the unhoused, for the incarcerated, and for their families. Holy God, have mercy upon us. And together, let us join in the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So there it is. The ugly shape of beautiful wood, rough hewn by human hands. Lord, where are you now? And there it is. A tight shut tomb. A borrowed grave. Sealed with stone and silence. 
Lord, where, where are, are you now? now? And there it is, your broken body, shrouded in linen, clothed in darkness. Lord, where, where are, are you now? now? And somewhere stands your people, crying, though tired of crying, their eyes sore and bloodshot. They will not sleep tonight. Lord, Lord where, where are, are you now? now? And out in the streets, the children have stopped their playing. The sound of music has gone sour. Even the unlikely people fidget and wonder. Lord, Lord where, where are, are you now? now? And here are we, saying, if only, murmuring, surely not, counting the cost for once of our carelessness, and our lovelessness and our sin. Trying so vainly to gain all, we bartered away you in the transaction. We have lost the one who found us. With the Peters and Marys of all time, we wait, for only you can tell whether we are worth rising for. Amen. Amen.